Hello, and welcome back. Today I will be reading The Mystery of Black Feather Woods, written by Tanak on Creepypasta.com. The following is a collection of official police reports and files from the Sterling County Sheriff's Office. They are part of an unsolved criminal investigation and deemed sensitive material. 911 call, June 20th, 2021. 12.04 a.m. 911, what's your emergency? Hello, my name is Kevin Watson. I need help. Please send someone. They are all dead. Who is dead? My friends. All four of them are gone. They, oh, this is my fault. This is all my fault. I did this to them. Where are you located, Kevin? I'm in Black Feather Woods, just near the top of Kings Canyon. Please hurry. I don't want to be out here alone anymore. Stay where you are, Kevin. The police and forest rangers are coming to your location right away. Oh, what have I done? What have I done? Police report. Deputy to Fuller, June 20th, 2021. Tonight at 12.04 a.m., our operators received a call about someone in distress with probable casualties. We ventured out to the location in Black Feather Woods and found the caller, Kevin Watts, huddled around a large campfire. It looks like he had burned all and his companion's camping gear just to keep the flames going. He was covered in both dirt and blood. As my flashlight rested upon him, he immediately sprang up and ran towards me. I unlatched my service pistol but did not draw or fire. He pulled me in an embrace and began to weep. He demanded that I take him out of the woods immediately. Watts seemed extremely uneasy as we traveled back to my cruiser. He kept insisting that I stick to the path no matter what. As I put him in the back of the squad car and drove off, Watts' demeanor seemed to calm. I brought him back to the station and turned him over to the Chief Rogers for questioning. Suspe suspect interview, Kevin Watts, 1.37 a.m. Interview performed by Chief Trevor Rogers. State your name and date of birth for the record. Kevin Watts, May 18th, 2003. You have the right to wait for questioning until you may feel mentally fit to do so or with the presence of legal counsel. Are you sure you wish to proceed at the current time? Yes, no matter of time is gonna make this any easier. And I imagine any lawyer worth their salt would advise me against telling my story. However, I have to tell you, you need to know the truth of the matter. Very well. How are you feeling, Kevin? Do you need some water or coffee before we begin? Is there a chance I could get a cigarette? Well. Seeing you are 18 and indoors at a police station, I'm going to have to go ahead and say no. Well, it was worth a shot, I guess. I am ready to proceed. All right, why don't you tell me what happened out there? I am ready to tell. The question is, are you ready to listen? I don't just mean hearing what I am saying. I mean to truly open your mind. I know you are an investigator and that you deal in hard facts, but... If you are going to believe me, then you must have an open mind. You need look beyond how things look at first glance. Well, let me tell you how things look at first glance. You called us saying that your friends were dead in your own words, said, I did this to them. We then find you covered in blood and dirt alone. Things aren't looking good for you, son. You would do well to come clean and tell us what happened. Oh, I'm going to tell you what happened. You just need to look past the sense of your reality. I'll do my best. Now start at the beginning. Why were you in the woods at night? To be blunt, we were tired of all the crap from last year and a half. We were tired of all the lockdowns, all the social distancing, all the masks and all the restrictions. Losing our junior year was bad enough, but this is our senior year. This was supposed to be our last time together, but instead we got no sports, no dances, and no field trips. I spent my 18th birthday alone, and that itself is a crime. So we wanted to have one last fun time, one last hurrah before we graduate. 
We went out to Blackfeather Woods to party and go camping. Who is this we and where are they? Mark Anderson, Claire Westbrook, Maria Souza, and Kelly April. They were all classmates of mine at school. As for where they are, I already said they are dead and you will never find their bodies. Is that why you are covered in dirt? Did you bury them on in the woods? No, I just know they won't be found. Not in any recognizable form anyway. What do you mean by that? Let me finish by telling you my story and then you will understand. Very well. What did the five of you do in the woods? Oh, well, we did Bible study and discussed current events plaguing the youth of the world. What do you think we were doing? We were drinking, doing drugs, and hanging out. Well, except for Kelly. She kind of stayed back and watched us party mostly. She was always a quiet girl. She was mostly there because Maria said Kelly had been going through a rough time at home lately and needed some cheering up. Anyway, that's beside the point, I believe. Around 10.30, we gathered around the fire. That's when I told them the legends of the Lost Trail. The Lost Trail? Oh, come now, Chief. You've been an officer for a long time. You must have heard the legends of the Lost Trail. For decades, hikers and campers have gone missing while exploring Black Feather Woods. The place isn't exactly the Appalachian Trail. It's not big enough to get truly lost, especially not big enough to completely disappear. The stories talk about a lost trail that will only appear to a chosen few. It is said that it is flanked with dead and rotting trees, that there is an oak that looks like a gargoyle guarding its entrance, trying to scare away the would-be victims. Anyone who stumbles on the trail will vanish forever. I've heard the stories, but I hardly put much stock in schoolboy tales. Oh, come on. Now, there are stories of unexplained hauntings and phenomenon all over the world. The screaming tunnels of Niagara Falls. The mysterious village of Northridge in Normania. The disappearance of Hemlock Hill Cemetery. No one can explain them, and there is a lot of smoke for there to be no fire. So all of us decided it would be fun to go looking for the trail to see if there was any validity to it. Oh yes, and so what happened? To be blunt, we found it. Maria spotted the gargoyle oak, and I swear to you, her caramel complexion turned completely white for a moment. She started chanting and clutching the silver cross around her neck for dear life. The rest of us didn't really believe it. We figured some kids like us carved out like the tree after hearing the stories. We had a good laugh, but we were still wanting to investigate a little further. The girls took some convincing, especially Kelly, who wouldn't say a word and kept shaking her head. After a while, she reluctantly agreed, and we all stepped on together onto the trail. And what did you find? At first, nothing. We walked for what felt like hours, and there was nothing to be found just some dead trees. Then we started to notice that there was something off about the whole area. It was quiet, and I don't mean peaceful. I mean dead quiet. No crickets chirping, no squirrels rustling in the trees, not even the sound of the wind blowing. We started getting the, that creepy feeling like you were being watched. We were about to turn around, but that's when we found it. Found what? We found a cellar hatch. It was just sitting in the middle of the ground. It didn't make sense to us because it was too cheap to be anything government or a storm shelter. It appeared to be made of smooth wood. Kelly and Maria begged to turn around and go home, but how do you come this far and not investigate? I know someone of your st stature would understand. We opened the latch and found a set of rickety stairs. Accompanying the stairs was a stench that none of us could identify. We couldn't, we almost couldn't go in, but we just couldn't help ourselves. We made our way down, going deeper and deeper into the earth. The stairs seemed to go on forever, and the truth we went further in the stronger stench became. 
I was ready to vomit, but then we reached the bottom. The whole area was pitch black. Even the moon didn't reach. Mark lit his lighter, and as soon as the walls were illuminated, that's when the screaming started. Lining the walls were entire catacombs made of nothing but bones and skulls. Even the stairs we came down were fashioned from them. That was when we started to realize that the stench was of decay. Claire backed up in fear and cut herself on a sharp bone attached to the ball, to the wall. I think that is what woke it up. Woke what up? What are you talking about, son? Well, we reached our tipping point. I'm going to tell you exactly what it is I saw. You can give me the polygraph later, and I promise I will pass. You have a choice whether you believe me or not. I am either the teen who snapped and killed his friends as you currently believe, or I am the boy who looked pure terror in the face and lived to tell, to tell the tale. Are you ready to make your judgment, Chief? Just tell me. Once a drop of blood hit the ground, the ash coating, it began to move. For the first time since coming on the trail, the wind blasted and the swirled around us. The ash span or spun around and around until it started to take form. Skeletal hands formed and the bones started to flow up until it started to take form. And the figure began to take shape. The ash and dust flowed around it like a living cloak of black jet. It became a specter of shadow, bone and ash. In its eye sockets, two smoldering embers of fire blazed. The wind stopped, and the only sound now of the f was the sound of panting as we froze in fear. The creature began silently stalking around the room its feet never touching the ground. It was a strange sucking noise as it passed by. It stopped at each of us, and it wasn't until it got to me that I knew what it was doing. It was smelling each of us. It came inches from my face and took a big whiff of me. It took all of my courage not to break down into tears. That was when it got to Kelly. The thing that took a huge sniff and if possible, I thought it's, I saw its dust and bone jaw curve into a smile. It sniffed and sniffed again. There was a moment of tense silence. Then it let out a loud banshee-like screech. It was just a scream, but I swear I got the impression of a single word. Unclean. The beast snapped into action. It grabbed Kelly and I could swear a horrible, horrible sucking sound. Kelly screamed, but it did her no good. Slowly, her body started to turn into dust and ash and flew into the creature's mouth, making its shadowy cloak larger. Only when Kelly was little more than a memory and a ringing in our ears did Mark snap into action. He did a straight run at the being, but that thing was too fast. The phantom's bony arm began to snap and reform and took the shape of a curved blade. With a single swipe, it cleaved Mark into two, scattering blood everywhere. Claire let out her own banshee wail as he, her high school sweetheart fell onto the front floor in front of her. She turned and ran for the stairs. I thought she was going to get away, but that fiend had other plans. The bones that made up the stairs grabbed her legs. She fell down and the stairs wrapped her around her, trapping her in place. Slowly, the creature floated over to her. I watched its shadowy ashes envelop her as she screamed into the night. I don't know if I felt more terror or relief when the screaming stopped. Once it finished with her, it slowly turned towards me. I debated running. I debated begging for my life, but in the end, what was the use? I knew it was futile and that I would share the same fate as my friends, so I simply closed my eyes and accepted my fate. I felt it come closer to me. I could feel its dusty breath on my neck. Suddenly, it released another scream. Again, I could feel the impression it was saying something that the screaming, I, but I couldn't make it out. 
Then everything went quiet, and I could feel ash raining down. I opened my eyes, and it was gone as if it had never been. I knew it was only my best chance, so I ran for it. I raced up the stairs and pelted down the trail and through the woods, and the next thing I knew, I was at the camp my campsite. I didn't know what to do, so I picked up my phone to call 911. I was completely blown away to find out that our little excursion only took just shy of an hour. It felt like we were out there all night. I called you guys out of depression, and here we are. So, Chief, what do you think? Well, it's a heck of a story, and it would seem almost airtight. But I have a question for you. If it is true, then why did that thing leave you alive? Now that is the one part I can't figure out. I don't know if it had simply eat its fill or if by writing, ridding myself of fear, it was no longer interested. Maybe it just wanted a martyr to take the fall for his work. I truly do not know, Chief, but it will keep me up at night for the rest of my days, along with everything I saw. So once again, I ask you, Chief, what is your conclusion? Well, I suppose I have two options. I could believe that somewhere in those woods there is some sort of boogeyman living in a layer of bones that no one else has ever seen or found before. Or I could believe in the most likely option. I could believe that a teenager went out with a group of friends to a party, whether because of drugs or a psychotic snap brought on by a changing world, he killed his friends and buried them in the woods. I'm sorry, Kevin, but I have to believe the latter. I have to go with the evidence and with every officer and bloodhound currently canvassing the woods. I presume that evidence will be soon found. You will never find the bodies or the trail. I think it can only appear to those it wants, and that's why no one has found it before and lived. Well, time will tell. Until then, you will remain in custody until you're at arraignment where based on your statement you will likely be sent to an asylum that is unless you drop the act and tell me the truth here and now i have told you the absolute truth you simply refuse to see it then i have no choice but to officially charge you with the murder of your friends you have the right to main re to remain silent police report chief trevor Lar rogers june 22nd 2021 for two days straight, my men have scoured the woods in search of the bodies. State troopers were called in on the second day, and together they have covered every inch of the forest. Outside of the campsite, no sign of the missing teens has been found. I have spoken to the families personally and informed them of the grim news. The families have been taking it hard, especially the parents of Kelly April. Her parents were shocked that she had gone out with her friends in the first place since her father had COVID-19, and it was possible that Kelly may have had it as well. We will continue the search until the locations of the teens remains found. Police Report Chief Trevor Rogers, June 25, 2021 Five days now and still no trace of the bodies. I have made numerous visits to Kevin Watts, who now resides in the Barlow Asylum. Despite my pleading, he is still under the delusion that they were killed by a mysterious creature and will not deviate from his story. Well, we were convinced that he must have buried them. New evidence may suggest to the contrary. Photos taken with Mr. Watts' smartphone feature the five teens together and the timestamps read between 8 p.m. and 10.45 p.m. The idea that he could have killed, moved, and buried them all on in under 90 minutes is a stretch in logic that not even I could accept. We are still waiting on lab results on his clothes for clues to their resting place. Lab Report, June 28th, 2021. We have finished our analysis on both the blood sample from Mr. Kevin Watts and well as the dirt particles found on his clothes. The blood sample was unremarkable with trace amounts of alcohol and marijuana in his system. This would not be considered sufficient amounts for hallucinations nor memory loss as suggested by police. The dirt and 
dust must have found on his clothes, however, is a genuine curiosity. There is a mixture of several elements found with the small sample. There is a soil that is not native to North America, but is instead one common to burial sites in Western Europe. There are large components of burnt ash found throughout. However, the most curious element of traces is traces de of degraded human bone that after extensive testing, we have carbonated it back to 600 BC. We will continue to run additional tests to discover the cause of these anomalies. Police report, Chief Trevor Rogers, July 3rd, 2021. Today we have received word from the Barlow Asylum that at 7.32 a.m., Kevin Watts was found dead in his room. The cause of death remains unknown, however, my officers reported that he died in a look of terror. All that was found was a small note on his desk torn from his journal, which was has been logged into evidence. However, the main suspect deceased, and no mystery of the bodies, no discovery of the bodies in two weeks, I am afraid the case of the murdered teens will be moved to the cold case file and forever may remain unsolved. Evidence number four, case 28. Four, seven. Contents. One letter written from the letter the late Kevin Watts left on his desk. See attached photo. He comes for me at night tonight of this, I am sure. I still don't know why he let me live, but he's coming to finish the job. To my lost friends, I am truly sorry for leading you into those woods. I'll be joining you soon. He lives in the shadows and in the blinding light. From him there is no refuge, no way in which to fight. We all live in fear of his face and of his blade. He is the one to whom all debts are paid. He is the bane of all those who draw breath. He is the man of ash and shadows. He is death. Thank you for reading this story. I'll see you guys in the next video.